Right, hello, lads and lasses, and welcome back to Boys Down Under, where I am back. Yes, I am not dead, uh, although I probably should be with all the exams going on and, and studying going on right now. But no, I am surprisingly alive, and we're back today for a new video. It's been almost a week, I think, since we've done a video, and what better way than to talk about how Australia reacted to the signing of Aaron Moy. I'll give my thoughts on him, all of that, and then we'll talk about Moritz Jens at the end. Before we go any further though, if you guys have missed me and you want to help make my day, <laughs> um, you can, uh, if you could click the like button, click the subscribe button, that'd be very much appreciated. But without further ado, let's get into it. So, before we talk specifically about Aaron Moy, there are now eight Australian footballers in the Scottish Premiership. Hearts have three in Cammy Devlin, Natty Atkinson, and Kai Breadroll Rouse. Uh, Hibs have one in Lewis Miller. St. Merrin have one in Keanu Bacchus. Dundee United have one in Mark Birigidi. Kilmarnock have one in Dylan McGowan. Livingston have one in Phil Kankar. And of course, Celtic now have Aaron Moy. And it makes you think it'd be. It'd be pretty cool if, Australia, if Celtic hang, hung on to Tom Rogic. And if we did hang on, well, you know, if, if Tom did end up staying at Celtic, we'd have four Aussies at the club. That's pretty, that's, that would have been pretty cool. We have three right now, which is just as good, though, as in my eyes. Now, for all the, those wondering the fundamentals of the deal, yes, it is only a one-year contract till 2023. However, there is an option to extend if, the, if, it, both, if it suits both the player and the club for the 2023-24 season. So, naturally, how did how did I come across this news? Well, I went to bed last night quite early because I had an exam this morning. Um, and I think I missed the announcement by an hour or so. So I woke up this morning, woke up to the news. I was absolutely, I was very happy with it. I knew I was expecting it, of course. We are all expecting it. But then waking up to it was a nice surprise. So... Naturally, at the crack of dawn, though, there were no, you know, reports out at the time. You know, everyone was still asleep or getting ready for the working day. And I, I go do my exam, flunk the poetry section of it, get back on my phone, and there it is. The whole of Australia's media, just sports media, just talking about the signing. Now, of course, as I always do in these sort of videos, some headlines for you guys to enjoy. Fox Sports Reporting. Ange gets his man as in-demand Moy signs with Celtic in huge cup boost for Socceroos. The ABC and their sports section saying, Another Australian is joining Scottish football giant Celtic with Socceroos midfielder Aaron Moy confirmed as the club's latest signing. BN Sports reporting that, Socceroos coach Graham Arnold has hailed midfielder Aaron Moy's overnight move to Celtic as a fantastic next step and the perfect career platform heading into the looming World Cup. Wide world of sports say Australian midfielder Aaron Moy will return to Europe, signing with Scottish giant Celtic for the upcoming, upcoming season. You get the picture. Australia has absolutely loved this move, right? Not to mention the socials went crazy as well. The A-League on Instagram, they, 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 they were lapping it up. So were the Socceroos, a couple other accounts here and there. It was great to see, but... It, I, I think we've got to read between the lines a little bit here. Now, it was reported, if you scroll back a bit, if you want to, it was reported and briefly mentioned by BN that Graham Arnold wants him to get regular minutes uh, prior, uh, prior to the World Cup at a level, and we all knew that was going to be the case. Well, us Aussies did. Aaron Moy needed minutes because he was uh, at Shanghai, and you know he, he wasn't getting minutes there you know, because of COVID, right? He hadn't played football in six months prior to our World Cup qualification knockout matches. So he needed that consistent first-team football prior to the World Cup this year. Now, uh, don't worry, I'm not going to rave on about the World Cup any more than I have to, of course, naturally. But yes, um, you know, what What does that mean? Well, if, 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 if Aaron Moy has joined Celtic looking for regular minutes, there's clearly a promise there from Ange that he's going to get them. Otherwise, why would he join, right? And... Look, even my dad is skeptical about this transfer, as I'm sure so many of you guys are, and have I've seen all the doubts being expressed on all of the socials, right? And yes, we know Moy isn't in his prime, right? And he isn't that pacey midfielder who will just pop up everywhere, like someone like Rio Hatate, 
right? But Moy's greatest strength is the ball at his feet, you know? And his passing game it is elite, right? It's exceptional. He can control the tempo of the game with, with his passing ability, you know? And what does that tell you? Well, it tells you he's going to absolutely excel for Celtic in the Scottish Premiership, where we hold the ball near... Well, at least over 70% of the time in, in pretty much all matches. Europe and the Champions League, well, that's, that's a different story. We'll have to see what happens there. But certainly in the Premiership, this should be a very, very... Uh, uh, this should be no for no reason out of Moy's ability, right? He should absolutely excel. But luckily, right, I, growing up as, you know, in this generation... A lot of social media, so I get to see everyone's opinions on. I get to see the doubts, I get to see the praise, I get to see the haters, all that. But luckily as well, I'm also someone who watched Aaron briefly while at Huddersfield, mainly while he was at Brighton, though. And also, crucially, for Australia, you know, for every single time he's played for Australia, I've pretty much watched it, you know, except unless it was like a friendly match at 4 a.m. in the morning, which is just unwatchable. Anyways, right? Prem fans will tell you, and Brighton fans will tell you, and Huddersfield fans will tell you, and mostly anyone who isn't an Aussie but has seen Aaron Moy play will tell you that he's an attacking orientated midfielder, right? Which he was. He was as well in the early parts of his career at St. Mirren, at Western Sydney Wanderers, Melbourne Victory, and in the Prem. But for the Socceroos, he serves as a primarily a holding midfielder and just a bit more defense, defensively orientated instead, right? And what does that say? Well, he's clearly versatile across the whole pitch, so he can play anywhere. But what I'm thinking is that his move to Celtic, he will be looking to play further back in the midfield, right? Because I think with, you know, naturally, as he's getting older, he's lost his pace. You know, he was never extremely pacey, but he's gotten a bit slower, I wouldn't say he's slow, but he isn't fast, so he can't, and he, he, he's not, okay, I think I'm waffling, he's not Tom Rogic, right, he is a player who has a passing game, exceptional, right, footwork is good, but it isn't trickery that you need further up in the midfield, So it's, some, it's footwork that is better utilised further back into the midfield, right, now, Questions arise over his age. You know, I've seen so many people call him James McCarthy 2.0 and just liken him to that. And that is ridiculous, okay? He has played any fo barely any football in the last two years with Shanghai. So I'd say, and I've brought this up before, but really, if you, if you think about it, he hasn't aged since 29, and that is evident. He played 90 minutes of a World Cup knockout match against UAE in Dubai in the heat without playing football for six, six months prior to that. And he goes a week later and he plays Peru for 120 minutes to send Australia to the World Cup, you know. As far as I'm concerned, and any other Aussie can argue this in the comments, but I thought, I thought Aaron Moy was one of our best in, that quali in those two qualification matches. I thought he was exceptional, the fact what he was doing, what he was doing with no match fitness whatsoever. And... I'm going to leave any bias aside right now. He doesn't walk into the Celtic side. I can accept that. You know, that is a given. I'm not over here parading him just because I'm an Aussie and I'm a Celtic fan because an Aussie signed for Celtic. You've got to be realistic. You know, that's the real world we're in. It's real world, not imaginary world. Realistic, right? He isn't walking into the Celtic midfield, but he is still, for me, a top-notch signing. He has a lot of experience, something that the Celtic midfield needs, with the departure of both Tom Rogic and Nia Baton last season, a player who suits the Premiership, or well, suits Celtics, suits Celtics uh, play style in the Premiership, and a player as well who would allow McGregor to move further up the pitch, where I think he would be a bit better, to be honest with you. I think he'd be more improved further up the pitch with someone like Aaron Moy behind him if we need that to happen, you know. And there's so much more, right? Quality depth. Person, I think, I think you know, easily, Moy is one of those players you bring in, you know, near the end of the match just to control the tempo, control the pace. He's a level, very, very level-headed player. He is not the type of player to lose his cool in, in real um, tight, intense situations. He will always remain with a level head, you know, 
probably adds to that the fact he has no hair, so his head is always pretty level. So that's a good thing. And yeah, I think not to mention it is a free transfer for a year only. Obviously, we've got the you know option to extend it further, but right now it is only a year. So if things don't go the way they should, if things don't go as swimmingly as I hope they do, it, it's a year only. We can cut him off. That's a year of wages we've lost and no transfer fee. It's 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 a no risk investment, right? And I think I think I'll push for it now. I, I let me let me know what you guys think about this. I'm thinking we change his name from Aaron Moy to Aaron Mahoy. Okay, just just leave it with me. I think I think we can work something out there. And it's funny. I've got to say, it's very funny. Almost a week ago, it was Ange in the press conference calling Aaron Moy a, a great player, but saying, no, we're not in the market for him or no, we're not going to push for him. <sighs> that sneaky, sneaky bastard. Anyways, to end the video off now, I just want to mention our second signing from last night, Moritz, Jan Moritz Jens. Sorry, it is a loan deal with the option to buy, which is always great. And I have to say, if if you weren't impressed by his ability of uh, defending ability, which I was, you'll be impressed by his interview. Go on to Celtic YouTube channel. It's a five minute interview. He labels Celtic as his dream move and how his heart has been set on joining Celtic ever since he almost joined us last season. Now, I won't spoil it all, but he also mentioned that Matt O'Reilly is one of his best mates when they played at Fulham at their young career. So I'm going to have to try and find a photo of them too. But he's coming in as a backup. He's happy with that. But for Jens, I think he has a future at Celtic. If he plays on the pitch and in any way, if that can resemble the way he feels about this club, he will have a future at this club without a doubt. But that is all from me. So if you guys did enjoy the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave your thoughts in the comments below about the double signing or Aaron Moy or Moritz Jens by himself. Yeah, and until next time, hail, hail.